lot of you automotive mechanics are familiar with that sound. Yeah, discharge batteries. I had an anonymous request from a 15 year old um, all about charging car batteries and usual safety precautions that should take place while doing so. Alright, so a little bit about car batteries today. First things first, do not smoke near car batteries. So, extinguish your butt while you still have one. Okay. 5 16 wrench, get started. Go ahead and we'll loosen this guy off. Okay, just like so. Now, the specific uh, YouTube user that sent me the request, um, I think he just bought himself a car. I don't know what he got, or maybe he got one given to him. Now, you may or may not have a, uh, a tie-down strap at the bottom of your battery. If you do, well, there's a good chance that it's a 9 16 bolt. So there you have it. This here is our discharge battery. Now, what we got going on here, if you remove your battery, you're dealing with a used car battery. Maybe it was in the vehicle when you bought it. Okay, wish I could get this handle a little back down. There we go. What you should do is find yourself some battery terminal cleaner. I'm pretty sure I got some here. Maybe I don't, maybe I used it all up. Um, and take yourself a little brush, a uh, little wire brush, just a small little bristle brush. Not that you don't need anything too coarse of, uh, of bristles on it, but go ahead and clean your terminals here. You don't want any of this corrosion here. Okay, so first thing we're going to take care of first. Here we got a battery that is discharged. We got corroded terminals. It just doesn't look all that healthy, right? What we're going to do here is we're going to take some battery cleaner. You don't need anything fancy. You know, you can buy this at auto parts stores or if you're Canadian, well, uh, Canadian Tire. Go ahead and spray the terminals. Go ahead and spray the top of the battery. Okay, we want to clean the top. We want it to look good. You know, this battery is fairly new. So now I'm going to take this little bristle brush. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all that old cro corrosion that is sitting here on the terminals. Okay. There's no right or wrong way to do this, you know. There really isn't. This is the reason why some vehicles are hard to start in the winter or even in the summertime. It's because of corru uh, rusted, corroded battery terminals. I also recommend you do this the same to your battery terminals on your car. Get those cleaned up, not just here, but also the connections on the vehicle. Just like so. Get yourself some paper towel. Just wipe off any of the excess. Next thing you're going to want to do, if you have a sealed battery, meaning this whole top portion here is, there's no caps to take off, no cell caps, um, then you'll never have to worry about it. It's a maintenance free battery. This guy here is, requires maintenance. Um, what you're going to want to do is take off one of the cell caps, both cell caps actually to be honest, and check the electrolyte level. All right. Look inside there and make sure that the level, it's just at the bottom of the base, okay? Make sure it's nice and topped up for each cell, which it is. You can go ahead and clean that guck out of there as well if you have any. Do the same to the other cell. If they are low, add distilled water and top it up. Don't run tap water in there. All right. So let's char, let's, uh, step right into the charging portion of it. Here we have a battery charger. Do not put a battery on concrete floors, okay, like this. Don't do it. Don't try it. Don't charge it either with it sitting on concrete. Don't leave it on concrete. Put it on a workbench. Put 
it on the carpeted floor. Um, put it on your mother's night table for all I care. Just don't leave it on concrete. Not good for the battery. Now, let's talk about side posts and top posts. Um, this here is a side post and a top post battery. When I go and order batteries, I always get them with the top post as well. It's so much easier to boost a battery with top posts. In the dead of winter, you have a discharge battery. You are sitting there trying to cl clamp your booster cables to these. Okay, very difficult to do. You usually end up having to get a buddy to hold them there while you try and turn your car over. I always order my batteries with top posts. If you only have a uh, side post battery terminals, what you can do is find yourself a bolt and thread it in. Okay, now this isn't the right size of bolt, I'm just using this as, a, as an example. Then you can go ahead and just clamp, okay, to it like that. Then you know you you can charge your battery because it's very difficult to just hook it up like this. Okay, it's not going to stay there. So what you can do is find yourself a proper bolt and just thread it in there, and then take your your cable lead here and just connect it like. Okay, pretty straightforward. What we're gonna go ahead and do here is take this and plug it into the wall. No brainer. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put the positive to the positive, and our negative to the negative. Also a no-brainer. Now, you'll notice that you have quite a fair bit of extension lead here, so what I'm going to do is just, just keep it off to the side as much as possible. Okay. Now, we got a whole bunch of functions on here. Your battery charger might not be as sophisticated, but here we got 2 amp, 10 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp, and 40 amp. 2 amp, 10 amp, and 20 amp are more or less a trickle charge, meaning that it'll take roughly 8 to 10 hours to charge a discharge battery. 30 and 40 amp are usually for boosting. So if you left your headlights on all night, one night, you go to start your car the next morning, the battery's totally drained, there's not an ounce of power in it. And you're late for work, so you need to get the car running. You know it's going to start fine, you know it's it's a hot summer day, you know the car is going to start fine, your maintenance is all kept up, the car is going to start. You can set it to 40 amp to boost the battery, just enough, just to get enough juice in the battery to start your engine. Then you unhook your battery cables, then you drive off, let your alternator do the work and your alternator will charge the battery from there. If your battery is totally discharged and you set it to 40 amp and you're trying to start let's say a flooded engine and maybe it's minus 10 you're trying to charge the battery using the boost function well what's going to happen is it's not going to let the battery charge enough what it's going to do is just send enough current to the battery to charge it just so the engine will roll over. It, the engine might roll over five or six times and then you'll notice that the battery is going slower, the starter is going slower and slower and slower until it finally quits. A trickle charge, if you set it for a, a 2 or 10 amp trickle charge, it'll take longer but the battery is fully charged. So when you take your fully charged battery after leaving it from a trickle charge for eight hours, you're going to notice that the battery will will crank the starter motor over and over and over with full power and you're not going to lose power unless you crank the starter for over 20 minutes. The starter's not going to last that long. Um, but that's what this is when we're talking about trickle charge and boost. You use your boost function. If you're late for work, you know the car's going to start. There's nothing wrong with it. If the car is flooded and it's a cold winter day, you're going to have to more than likely set it to a trickle charge and let it charge for a few hours. Okay, so let's get this puppy going. First we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Now we're going to set our amperage. I'm, this battery is totally discharged and I'm not in any hurry to get the car running, mainly because I have work to do to it this afternoon. So I'm going to set it for a 10 amp trickle charge. There's two. Let's do this again. There's 10. 
batteries charger is going to start humming. There is a fan in this guy to keep it cool. So you can tell we only have 10% battery charge. I can change it and see the voltage. So the battery is charging. We're at 12 volts, 12.7. You'll notice if you um, uh, start the car first thing in the morning, the voltage, if you have a volt gauge, your volt gauge might go up to 14 volts. Well, by the time this battery is completed, it'll go up to 13. So that's pretty much that. I do want to mention something to this in my personal experience here. If you have a dead battery in your car, take the battery out of the car. A man, a gentleman, about 35, 40 miles away from me, um, had a 30, 1936 Ford, I don't know. It was, a, it was an antique car, mint condition. He took it to car shows. He only drove it like once a year. Put five miles on the odometer. He went to go charge the vehicle to take the car to a show and shine, a show and shine that I actually attended. What had happened, he took the battery charger, hooked it up to his battery. The battery was inside the vehicle. The battery caught fire. Uh, the battery charger short-circuited. Eventually it, uh, it uh, fried the battery and the battery caught. It ended up claiming a mint condition antique vehicle. The car burnt, the garage burnt. Seven years prior to this, when I was still in high school, I had a 1989 Chevrolet Cavalier Z24. Same as my black one, except this one was red. It was uh, a car that I had for a very short time. I only had it for about three, four months before I sold it. Uh, it was more or less just a parts car, mint shape. I was driving this car to school one morning. The battery went dead. I hooked the battery charger up to it and try and get to class like it mattered back then. But I was late, so I hooked it up to the boost function. I came back outside, the battery charger caught fire. I ran. I unplugged the battery charger as soon as I could, put the fire out, and, well, needless to say, I missed the day of school. Eh? Well, it was good enough. But, ever since then, I do not charge batteries with a battery charger if the battery is in the vehicle. I take the battery out. Even charging a battery in the garage or in the basement is even a bit iffy. Me, I am doing it right now for, well educational purposes for this 15 year old that sent me an email. On the other hand, I do have a fully charged fire extinguisher here as a precaution just in case something did happen. We are dealing with a car battery filled with sulfuric acid. It is extremely flammable, the gases that emit from this battery. When you are charging the battery, there is a highly amount of explosive gases that are emitting from that battery. Anything could go wrong. That's why I have a long distance between the battery charger and the battery itself. I do not have the battery charger right jammed tight against the battery. Don't do that. 